following program is brought to you with limited commercial interruption. Today's broadcast is being simulcast in broken English. Welcome to the show that we're doing right now. What the hell are we doing on this show? Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Let's go. What is this? Who else but the Q? It's showtime. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Can you dig it? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Q. Now you're listening to the best pop culture, current events, current affairs show, east or west of that Mississippi River, hailing from the great city of St. Louis and worldwide at theqnow.com. I am your host, Mark Bland, joined today by my favorite person in the whole wide world. There he is. Jason Call is here. What is going on, Jason Call? Ah, oh, welcome to the show. We have Moshe Coppolo on the show today as our guest. I'm excited to talk to him. Uh, things are getting a little hairy in the Middle East, so we will talk about that too. And Bernie Sanders thinks that young generations are <laughs> underestimating Trump. We will discuss that a little bit too, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to discuss a lot of things on this episode of the Q. Now, welcome. You're listening to us on 1280 AM KYRO 102.5 FM WIBH and worldwide at the QNOW.com. Uh, our first guest mm-hmm. that we are going to welcome to the show right now. He uh, comes to me by virtue of another past guest, a friend of the show, our boy Chucky. He, uh, he hit me up out of the blue, and he said, hey, mm-hmm. I've got this guy. I think that you guys will hit it off. You really need to, ch- uh, to talk to each other. I-, I think you should have him on your show. I told Chuck on that day, I said, listen, you're, Chuck, you're, you've been on the show multiple times. You're an all-star mm-hmm. when it comes to our show, and uh, you have a, a, a seat at the table anytime you want. So anything you bring to the table is good in our book. So right mm-hmm. off the bat, this individual was given – that credibility, like the merit, right off the bat, Jay. Mm-hmm. All right. Please welcome to our show, one Mr. Moshe Kapo- no. Coppola. Coppola or Co- Coppola? You're Coppola. Good. You're Coppola. Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Moshe guys. Coppola. And shout out to Chuck. Thank you for, for introducing Pull me. Pull that microphone down. Don't be afraid to be closer to that microphone. Like, right, Is that better? Can that's you hear me much now? better. Much better. There we go. All right. There shout out to Chuck. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on. And um, I understood, listen, after I had my first phone call with Moshe, Ooh. just to just kind of catch up with him and find out a little bit about yes. him as a person. Yes. Uh, once I had that phone call, I realized very quickly, Moshe is a very educated, well-spoken individual. Seems to Like, me. this is a person who understands a lot. Over-educated? Over-educated. Over-educated. <laughs> Over-educated. Over-educated. Too, too much. much. I have too many papers. It's now, uh, <laughs> Moshe. When people come on the show, I like to get to know them a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I like the people to get to know them a little bit. Now, this might require you to take off clothing. Mm, you might it's clothing want, yeah. optional it is what I'm trying depends. to say. I mean, that's that's a lot of hairy man in here. It's a hey, don't, don't be afraid of that mic. Talk into that mic. <laughs> it's you know, a mood I'm not afraid of that moment. Right there. There you go. Right you into the end of it. You should just be more afraid of well, me with my shirt on. You know, you I mean, are we I, going full Burt Kreischer here? We can do that. We uh, can we can just get going. It's if not you want, a problem. He's saying, he's saying he can pull it off. He's saying he can pull it off. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, mom and dad growing up, where you're from. Tell us a little bit about uh, where you come from. Yeah, Give no, us a little I'm background. Also, I'm also from here. I, I grew up in St. Louis. I went to Clayton High School. I played football there. I did overly well in school there. Wound up going to college. When I went to college, I wanted to get... You're a very self-assured individual. Sure. But you are. Yeah. I mean, I can tell. Like, Feel it. I, you are very self assured. Like, sure. you're, you're like, well, no, you're like, I'm overeducated. I, I spent way too much time at this high school. Like, these people wasted my time. No, no, I don't say that. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. no, no, no but I was, I was 18. I was like, if you're 18 in St. Louis, this isn't, uh, this is not. The, doesn't feel growing up here that you're in the most dynamic city in America. And like many people in St. Louis, I wanted to get out when I, I went to college. I was like, ah. let me go as far away as I can. Wound up going all the way to New Hampshire to, to Dartmouth College. You went to Dartmouth? I went to Dartmouth. That's awesome, man. And what did you study while you were at Dartmouth? Uh, technically, it's a senior fellowship, but I, I have a history degree. 
You have a history and, degree. And, and layman's history. Which also, like, bodes well into kind of why uh, having you on the show was important because, like, there's that background. You understand things uh, when it comes to the history of our country, the politics, say. Being a, poli- a political radio show and dealing with politics quite often, it's nice to have uh, well spoken individuals who understand that. In uh, politics. I appreciate the compliment. I understand. Um, Dartmouth College. Yep. We're hanging out up there. Yep. Are we frat boying it up? Are we partying everyone, it? Are we, every, do, are we doing everyone, the typical college experience? So everyone joins a frat there, even if you're not a frat boy. It's over 70% Greek when I was there, if you were eligible to join a house because freshmen couldn't join. So. And what, were you, did, what house did you join? A local house that no one knows outside. Nobody of knows outside of that area <laughs> yeah, up no, there at like, all. Yeah, standard. Something Delta something. Delta no, no, Pike was, Deltas. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's fine. But no, so so I, I I played football. That's that's I got what, you. That's what took my my time effort and well, not my knee. Now, did you take play football for Dartmouth? Did yes. you do you, you so you played now when you when you got the shot at Dartmouth, what, you said you tried to go as far away from home as you possibly could. Yes. Uh, was that a degree? Was that an offer to you for football to play yeah, at Dartmouth? No, Is no, that no. how that worked out? Yeah, so I wanted to play in the Ivy League. I got um, you. Okay. That was my goal. And the way football recruiting in the Ivies worked then, I don't know exactly now in the whole new world of football and college and sports, you didn't send your application to the school. I sent my application to the football coach. And the football ah. coach walked my application along with up to 35 down to admissions and said, I think these are some fine gentlemen you should let into the school. And as long as those fine gentlemen look close enough to the academics of an average student, even if we do nothing else, uh, they are likely to let them in. Do you feel that this is also practiced at multiple Ivy League and typical oh, it, other it's colleges? It's a game they all play. No, they're really explicit with because how this works. Because you, what you brought up is a very interesting point that I don't think a lot of people ever consider when talking. Like, you know, you got sports guys, right? They yeah. always do their sports shows. and They're always talking about all these topics. Well, he just tapped on something that's really unique. The idea that there's a lot of colleges out there, like a Duke University, Uh right? High, well-known, prestigious university, kind of focused on the academic side of things, right? Duke's bigger than one. They're even bigger than that. And depending on culture and the Uh person and where they're coming from and all these things, yeah, I might have this top college prospect who's a great high school basketball player, but they're coming from a pretty rough background Mm -hmm. area whatever it is and it's not something that i would typically think is getting a lot of ivy league application opportunities if that individual does somehow get on to a basketball team because of whatever school recruits them Mm -hmm. okay now you're looking at the situation like are they there because they also have the education to go along with this? Is it just on the basketball side of things, right? We're talking about the sports side of the world of college athletics now. So, like, you know, It's really funny you bring that up. I had a good buddy named Taylor, okay, and he was a walk-on, and he was from inner city Philadelphia, and he had some imposter syndrome about being at Dartmouth at all. And I said, Taylor. Explain imposter syndrome for people sure. out there that might not know. He felt like he didn't really belong, that he wasn't really... Fair. And, and I've had this discussion with him like after college when he graduated. Like, what do you mean you didn't belong? I was like, if anyone should have the imposter syndrome, it's not you. You got in having nothing to do with athletics. You got in because you're a great student, right? He's you know, he he's was, literally right. the typical of what right. the he's Dartmouth like, he's looks like, for. They, right. like, he's like, you're who they look for, right? I got in because I'm a meathead who hits people well, <laughs> and I have good enough grades that they can pretend I'm a normal student. Like, why is like I didn't feel like I was. I was like, you're the one who belonged at Dartmouth. I'm the one who just hit people to get in. You know, you, you think about how smart he is, and he's thinking that way, like, I'm a meathead who hits people. Imagine guys – who get recruited like at Texas, you know how sure the the work put in to get them through college because some of them are probably just dumb. As I hell. mean, some are and some aren't. Gronkowski's smart. Yeah, sure. Say what you will, yeah. Gronkowski. <laughs> as much as he he plays at, it, he right. As he much as he's a the, meat stick on TV, yeah. the dude has a lot going on between the ears. Where right? do we stand on Kelsey though? Where do we stand on Kelsey? He's a smart guy. He's just he's. A, I don't think he's, he's a like perpetual this super bro. smart guy. Which I think Kelsey, he's first off, Travis. Well, first off, shout out to Jason Kelsey, the older brother who played yeah. center, the better, harder core position. So, okay, That's so true. he's a beer drinking. Were you fun a center? Guy. He's a dad. in college. I was, so of course I'm yeah. going to appreciate that. that. That's fair. Jason yeah. Kelsey's a fun drinking dad. Travis is a perpetual bro. 
He's just, you know what I mean? But is he if, smart? Do we I think, think he's that he's smart. a well-educated I, I think he's clever individual. enough. I don't know. Ask Taylor. I'm not. Yeah, his there. comebacks sure. to things. <laughs> But you see the immaturity bro side, like when he sings at things and his graduation from Cincinnati, he chugged a beer on stage. Right. Like 30 something years old. I mean, um, I that's cool in your 19, maybe. Graduating. Again, from bring up Gronk. He's retired and doing it on TV Dang. for the Brady Road. Sure. Yeah, if, if Gronk <laughs> was completely stupid, they wouldn't have him on TV. So, Moshe, we're Dartmouth. We graduate. We get the degree in history, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where do we go in life from there? <laughs> Here's a fun, fun party. The year's 2006. Uh, I wind up messing up and not getting a job out of corporate recruiting. My fault. Didn't know how to interview at first. And I wound up, but I didn't quit. I just kept hustling. And I wound up getting a job in the operations department at SAC Capital, the now relatively infamous hedge fund, in um, middle office bonds operations this sounds about as boring as i can get i can see you falling asleep but it's financials and you're kind of a big financials fan yes so this works out for you this is where i start on a purple on on, on the on on a personal note yes and and it's it's the kind of job i want like this is the job you want to start a career except i got a job in bonds and i wound up specializing in distressed and foreign bond settlements there to start my career and if you notice, I said 06. So what happens two years later? The financial crisis. Right. So I wind up having a front row seat to everything melting. By the way, while you're handling this on the bond side and, and, and breaking your, your, your nut over Everything's here. Everything's breaking in front of me. I'm just saying, like, while you're handling it over here, I'm doing subprime mortgages over here in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> on the back side. Like, I'm on the other side of the crash, the, the side that you don't, you're not proud of. Like, I'm not doing it on purpose. I happen to get a job into that world mm-hmm. out of the complete offer that was coming from a friend of a friend. Sorry, and so I money. took this individual up on this opportunity. So I'm learning about mortgages and how they work and how to do them. And like being the person who handles all the signatures and doing all the work of a Mortgage company, basically. Uh, I'm the low man on the totem pole at the same time, but they're pushing hardcore at this time, like you said, subprime mortgages that are eventually going to be a huge problem that kind of cracks a lot of the wall. You help blow up the world. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was my fault. Yeah, I, I, not, it's totally fault. not not totally you are my fault. single-handedly responsible for blowing up the world kind of us. kind of yes kind of yeah. you were on the other side fixing I, I helped i helped no no i, I wasn't fixing it no no, no I, I helped how how well actually i wasn't we didn't mortgages we weren't big on but uh hedge fund yeah sac like if you saw the movie dumb money yep right so stephen cones was actually in that he was played by vincent d'onofrio mm-hmm. and i remember watching it going that's not what Steve's like. It looks like him. Vincent D'Onofrio looked exactly like Steven, and they didn't have him as tall as Vincent is because Steven's not a tall guy, but he didn't act like him. Like, I've seen the guy. I worked yeah. at his place. Um, you know, I wasn't cool enough to talk to him regularly. He's a self-made billionaire. Now, was this place uh, a lot like uh, Wolf of Wall Street, kind of no. uh, that type of a place? No. Or no? So we weren't partying. We weren't taking corporate vacations, uh, the whole team uh, no. on uh, ATV adventures and Wolf stuff. Wolf of Wall Street was a, sale, was a sleazy sales department. There's barely any, like, they had a tiny group of people doing clients. They turned people away. They charged more than anyone. They didn't care about sales because they didn't need to. The money came to them. Even when they got in trouble after the financial crisis, uh, they just ran their own money to stay in business because they had billions, literally. The guy's the top. Fair enough. So, very different vibe. Now, that said- I was just curious. Maybe oh, you guys you got some, it you in. you want some wild stories. I got some wild stories for you. I mean- Oh, no, no, no. No, no. No, no Save I, them. I, I got them. Save them for them. me. You want to- uh, Listen- I mean, where do you want to go with this? I got I got all day. All like, right, give me a short one. Give me a little quicker, a little, little quickie. Go ahead. Give me a little quickie fu- real quick. Funny- we'll get into some deeper ones later. The funniest of the years of 06 was the old Wall Street guys I ran into, some of our coverage. And one of them decides to invite me out. Now, I never get invited out. I'm not the guy who matters. I'm not the guy who's trading, making sure. a deal. But I support the guy, so like sometimes you invite guys like me out. So one guy invites me out to Manhattan, and I, I, I of course, email my trader. I say, hey, should I go to this? Is it okay with you? Because- I want to cover myself. Like, now oh, you're living in New York at the time. I'm li- I was living in Connecticut, the place oh, in Connecticut, Connecticut. Okay. but Sanford. So right next to New York city, it's, it's a our, WWE headquarters, our train ride down to New York city. I said, should I go out to this? Yeah, go party. This guy's great. He's like, don't tell me about it. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. okay, why not? Let's try it. I'm 
what, 24 or something? Sure, you're a young guy getting I'm ready to hit the city and have a good I'm, time. Right, I'm, I'm, but I assume it's going to be professional. I was wrong. Wait, wait, wait. You were wrong. I was wrong. Stay there. Stay there, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a quick break here on the queue now. When we come back, we're going to find out why he was wrong. Moshe, why were you wrong? We will find out. We'll be back on the queue now right after this. Twelve eighty AM K Y R O. Welcome back to the queue now. Mark Bland, Jason Cole, joined today by Moshe Coppola. 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 Correct. Moshe Coppola. And uh, we've been talking to Moshe. Moshe was explaining a story before we went to break. For any of you out there that missed it, uh, he is a young man. He is fresh out of Dartmouth College. He is working. I was, uh, I was a young man. He is a uh, year matters here. He works out. Story. It's 2006. Yep. He's working outside of New York City in Stamford, Connecticut. He's got an offer to go out and hang out on the corporate dime, potentially. Potentially. Someone else's corporate dime. Somebody else's oh, corporate no, dime. You're always hanging out for free when the coverage calls you. For and, sure, we're going to go drinking on their dime. In Manhattan. That I assumed. Yeah, Manhattan. And uh, he said that there was uh, something that he assumed, but he was wrong. I was wrong. It was going to be professional. And I thought it would just be drinks with the coverage, with the guy who you know was our, was our counterpart, worked with us. I just thought it would be drinks, you know, collegial drinks. That's the way they'd like to drum up business. They go spend a bunch at the bar, maybe take you out to an expensive dinner. That's the normal thing to be done. Right. I was wrong. I was wrong. What were you wrong about? So I get there, and uh, they were serving wine. I was right about the drinks. What I was incorrect about was the professional part. I was in a suit. Actually, I wasn't. I was in slacks and a, and a shirt because I could be. Uh and most of the other guys are in slacks or a suit. Our, sure. I mean, it's the end of the day. Some of those right. guys coming straight from their jobs or whatever. They're well, just going to take, we didn't wear take the work. suit jacket off. You're going to move on. Right. We, didn't, we didn't wear suits at work. It was not the uniform. But uh, So you're dressed nice, though. Business right, yeah, casual. I'm dressed you're up. Good. Business casual. So is everyone else. And some guys were just business formal. Fine. All the women serving the drinks were butt naked in New York oh. City. Wow. All right. Eyes wide shut style. All right. Party. Moving I'm on. Like, all right. I'm like, how do you do this? So New York doesn't even let strippers happen in New York. They have to wear pasties. So this shouldn't even be legal in right. the city at this high end wine but bar. But you are definitely in the city. I'm definitely in New York City. No questions asked. We're down on like the Lower East Side, if I remember correctly. Got it. Okay. And I walk in and the way they got around it is they'd hired a body painter mm-hmm. and then they hired a bunch of strippers. Uh, and if you paint them, it wasn't women serving it was moving art it was an art exhibit oh. i have been invited to an art exhibit Jeez. unbeknownst ah. to me now live one. Moshe, you have opened up our eyes to the beauty of what the queue now in right. this radio station could be <laughs> i mean invite me to more art exhibits how about we get moving art yeah here at the station. There we go. Right? Like, oh, I need a glass of water for this guest. Ah. Could you, moving art, go get it for me? And then, then she or he, depending on, I guess, the guest or yeah. how the day works. Whatever. I don't know. You know, it is 2024, right? People are a little bit more open with their mindsets I'm, I'm and sure stuff. I'm sure no one would ever get canceled yeah. and nobody out no. there can tell no. that there's only men in the office they when could, we're having this discussion. They yeah. could, uh, <laughs> they no could one can tell serve, that right now. Nobody could. They nobody could serve could. our guest Triscuit. They could. With cheese. Uh, but Jason, you would love moving art, yeah, of course, because that would be uh, voluptuous. Yeah, it would be, well, it amazing. Would be art amazing. Art exhibit. I'm not picky. Either. Moving art exhibit. There was a lot of different kinds of artwork too. You know it what? Was, it was a wide variety of artwork. Hey, I'll say, and that. it was all beautiful artwork. Very like, good artwork. That's what I'm going to say. Excellent, it's, excellent touch up work by the artists. Really, really, really solid. If the guests thanks wanted to their to moms do, and dads. So be it. Big ups to the dad, and mom. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Plus, dad's the one who chooses the sex of the child, right? Isn't it because of the dad's side? I mean, they the never game? gave me I a know, form. I was like, boy, 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 boy. Did you get a form? I mean, I, I, I didn't, didn't get, get a form. form. There was no form. form. The they just sort of showed up. Like, girl, 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 girl. Um, there you go. Our you guest today is uh, Moshe. And um, we're going to be talking to him a little bit here in a second. But uh, I've got mm-hmm. some topics I want to get to. 
And uh, oh, Moshe, you can keep up with this because uh, I'm going to read uh, the news story here, and then you just got your opinions. <laughs> We're going to read them really you'll fast. You'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. You like, <laughs> listen, and if you want to add the financials to any of this, you let us know. You just go into the financial talk, all right? All right. We, uh, we have uh, no uh, problem. You don't have a pillow, though. If you're not willing to go to bed for that, <laughs> like that's a nighttime Ooh. show. Are you going to go okay. to bed with him for that? Yeah. I will. Yeah. I ta- uh, listen, I already said it was closed like, optional, it, bro. Like, 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 he, uh, he already asked me to take my shirt off. That's putting in work for the show. That's dedication. Guys, Real dedication. Is, Listen, that is. I'm trying to bridge the, service. bridge the gap between the Jewish culture and me. Would that's like what I'm kid? saying. I, don't, I, I can't demonstrate Jewish culture with any of this. Fair this enough. Is, this is a terrible example of anything. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Donald Trump. You know that guy? You ever heard of him? No. Who's that? Donald Trump he's melts down. He's the most religious president in the history of the by universe. By far the most religious. Is, and is, that, is that the guy who cheated on his third wife, fifth wife with the porn star? No, all of them. That while, while she was pregnant, yeah. Did that happen? They, yeah. Is that is that yep. sanctioned by a religion that you, I know? Nope. Of? Okay. Uh, no, it's is not. Is there a religion that says that's you, okay? Yep. Um, you. Yep. Uh, I mean, I'm Jewish. That's like, not cool. Someone hit oh, no. broken. Your yep. your guys are Christian, right? Christian. Same Christian? Bible. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so is that okay in Christianity? Like, fill me in here. Your Old Testament. You're not my Old supposed Testament. to. You're not supposed to. It it's on the tablets. It, it's on the tablet. It's on the yeah. tablet. Moses, Moses, you know Moses. You've heard yeah, of Moses. I'm literally. I mean, that's what Moshe means. You know who Moses I, I, yeah, is, yeah, right? That's where my yeah. name comes from. Moshe. It was one yeah. of them. Moshe. Me, me. Yeah. That's what. One of that's why I started calling him Moshe. And now, it's yeah, here 10% we are. Percent of all. Oh, I'm a vampire. Sense. I've been around for de- centuries. So <laughs> you cool. look like it. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I can tell. Uh, Donald Trump melts down over his gag order. Yeah. And unleashes a deeply deranged yeah. attack on the hush money trial judge ranting about <laughs> all of the sleaze bags, low lights, and bags. grifters. Grifters. This man coming apart at the seams. It is a <laughs> really bad feeling to have your constitutional oh, right to free speech. This gag order. Such a big part of our life and our country. So unfairly taken from you, especially when yeah. all of the sleaze bag, low lights, <laughs> and grifters that you oppose are allowed to say absolutely anything yeah. they want. Now I can't even talk at home. Trump Trump whined about on Truth Social. It is hard to sit back and listen to lies oh, and false statements worst. being made against you, knowing that if you respond, even in the most modest fashion, you are told <laughs> by a corrupt and highly conflicted judge highly. that you will be put in prison, maybe for a long period of time, he went Ever. on. Uh, this fascist mindset oh. is all coming from D.C. It is a sophisticated hit job on crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, <laughs> me, said Trump, who himself, He's a mega worst. fascist, uh, Judge N. Goran and Kaplan, also of New York, are equally corrupt, only in different ways. What these mm-hmm. thugs are doing is an attack on the Republican Party and our once great nation itself. Oh, our First it Amendment must so stand great. free and strong. strong. Give me liberty or give me Death. Uh, I take that. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I th- agree I think, to those terms, I, I sir. Think, well, well, of course, you shall get well, no well, liberty. There's more. Of course, there's at more. this point, nobody outside of MAGA cult believes the oh, Trump lies. The mounds death. of evidence uh, at this point, nobody. Uh, the mounds of evidence presented in this case prove that this is not a political witch hunt, oh. but a legitimate Gosh. judicial <laughs> endeavor. To hold him accountable, gentlemen, right? right? Like, this is what we're here I, I, for. What, what I just heard is that, you know, there's two people, uh, like the makers of dictionaries, like Miriam Webster, just <laughs> owe him a thank you because they now have a nice modern definition and example for the word uh, projection. Yeah. Sure. That's that's all that's, I have to say on that article. Right? I mean, it is. Yeah. It's, it I, is I mean, he it's, thinks the lady doth protest yeah. too much. <laughs> Like, if you want to know what Donald Trump's done, just get him riffing on someone. Right. right. Find someone who's done a lot of bad known things, and Donald Trump will start pointing it out and just write everything down he said, because he's done it. I really? Because he just attacks you with stuff he's done. On the last show, we brought up the <laughs> every fact- Every accusation is an admittance, right? 100%. Oh, oh yeah. Every accusation that's is exactly an admission of guilt. Say, yeah, we that's that every- yeah, We say it all the right, time. Right, you know, it's, it's- Now, hold on. Yeah. Hear, hear me out, though. Last show, we talked about the fact that there were nine gag orders that he was kind of let up on, right? (laughs) Now, what we're talking about here is the fact that he was talked to about these gag orders and told, if you do not stop, we will put you in jail. Now he's mad about that. I really, but here's my problem. I'm actually mad about that. The nine gag orders were nine too many. He should already be in jail. That's actually correct. Like, like, that's actually what I'm mad about, right? That, you know, our society should hold really important, rich and famous people to a higher, not a lower standard. If you or me went to court oh, or any of our listeners I mean, and pulled this kind of shit, 
Uh-oh. We would be in jail. Oh, you have to edit that one. That's a beep. <laughs> Y'all can figure out what I said there. But no, if Everyone we went, if we went to that, court it's gonna go and pulled this kind of, <laughs> right, we would be in jail. 100%. We, we would be jailed. You what? wouldn't be able to do it nine times because you'd be in jail right. for like I'd be in jail by, by like the second one until they brought me to the next trial, <laughs> and that would straighten me or you or every listener out. Yeah, you'd be like, all so right. So geez, the I'll idea that down. we should hold somebody to a, a lower standard because they're more important to society just blows my mind. Like, you were the you were the, the president of the United States of America, he- right? Like, you should be held to the standard befitting the office, which means you should behave like he, it, right? Has, I don't know why he's getting away with something when he's but, no longer president, <laughs> like that you that would send all of us to jail. That is not to me, that's insane, right? I he, actually that's a I agree with him. The judge is not doing the right thing. He he has to be the worst offender at at contempt of court. He has to be. How many people uh, have been far. hit with ten violations? But here's the thing, guys. If you do it in a circuit court in St. Louis yeah. and you're a low-level person or a you're middle-class going. citizen who just happens you're to be in a St. Louis situation that's a little bit... Alderman. All right, you can or be a corrupt... Cru- cru- but my point... Not that we've had any of those, but if you happen to be a corrupt... Right. My point being simply <laughs> this. One alderman. time is all you get. You only get one shot, and then yeah. you go to jail. Like yeah. This is how that They're works like, in oh, real court. Court. We'll see you I can't morning. believe the judge is even allowing nine, much less talking about the idea of a tenth and then maybe jail time. I want to see the tenth happen because yeah. I know it'll happen. Yeah. He won't send him to jail. Him They're not going to send him to jail, which, by the way, this is, uh, this is crazy. It we is have crazy. a man who's running for president of the United States. He is probably one of the more corrupt individuals of the last two centuries. Yeah. Might be ever. To be in politics. I mean, I mean ever since like There were some pretty bad like people at Tammany 80, Hall, bro. You know? <laughs> there were some, yeah, some bad people. That's what t- I'm talking about. Like, Tammany like Hall, New yeah. York uh, local politics in re- 18-something. Re- Five points, Whoa, yeah. Re- recent Baltimore <laughs> mayors when they went through three of them into jail. <laughs> exactly. St. Like, Louis City Alderman. That Alderman's. maybe. That you know, maybe. We, we have a lot of choices in Three America. Illinois governors all in prison. Yeah. You know. but, you know, but this is that level to the extreme, if you think about it. like We never had a president do this before. Everything. We don't have a president. Yeah, like, like, usually, you don't make it past Senator Menendez. Think about uh, like, <laughs> like, you know, like, like usually that's where you get stopped Moshe, when you're that bad. Moshe, we've we've been riffing here on Donald Trump for a second, but uh, because you are a guest and we don't know a lot about you, right? Uh, I, I think on the on the tag on this this topic here, I just want to ask real quickly: is um, where do you foresee things going over the next? six to seven, eight months as we move into the election and the election happens. What do you foresee happening? How do you see things falling out? I have no idea. Do you have an opinion? Do you have a thought on that? Have you thought about it at all? Have I thought about it? Yes. Do I have, do I, do I predict it? Uh, you know, look, the polls have sometimes showed him in the lead, sometimes showed him behind. Him. Do you feel that Donald Trump truly has a, a, a real chance? Yes. Oh, you do, you do feel he has a real chance? He is, he is the standard. He is the current nominee for the Republican Party. Sure, sure. If you want to joke and think that he has no chance, I point you to 2016. He's the former he, president. Yep, you're right, right. Like he won before. Right. It's not like it's not like America hasn't decided to vote for him before and his opponent Joe Biden has really significant negatives where frankly, uh, I probably wouldn't consider voting for Joe if a more standard or normal or basic Republican was running. I just don't appreciate the politely put unprofessionality, uh, uh more correct but corruption and other problems that comes with this specific president. So when you say, does he have a chance? Yeah, look, he's one of the two guys running and he's gained. If he won, would you be happy? Would you like that if he won? I didn't like it when he won the last time. That's fair. No, no, no. That's fair. No, no, no. I wasn't. I'm not trying to like got you or put you in a position or anything Would like you that. you like that? No, no, no. I, 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 mean, I, I, I mean, I've told people who I vote for. This is not like a hidden secret, yeah. right? Like, like everyone talks about like, oh, there's these Obama Trump voters. I'm like, I'm a Romney Hillary voter, right? Like I voted like, like I was, I was voting Republican. Like I am the independent swing voter. I'm literally that guy. Like, unsurprisingly, I'm also in my 40s and have two kids. Like, this is, like, literally the demographic of swing voters in America. And I, and if I was – the right only thing I don't have – like, I'm from the Midwest. That's also the swing voter yeah. thing. The only thing that switches, changes me from the average swing voter is I'm not Christian. Yep. Like, that's there the one – like, goes to church is also on that list. Right. Yeah. Sure. Like, I go yeah. to synagogue. But, like, really, like, somewhat religious, has kids. Like, that's actually what swing voter, like, demographically yeah. – oh, no, you're right. You're right. And, and I am, right? Like I, like, I have voted Republican and I have voted Democrat – 
And one of the things I like in my politicians is I want some professionalism, right? Like I was, I was considering McCain until he put Palin one, one McCain heartbeat away from the presidency. I'm like, oh, Obama oh, yeah, looks okay. Exactly. I'll vote for him. I didn't really like his presidency, but he was at least professional. And I voted Romney. Like I am a swing voter. I'm, I'm truly that. And I was happily going to vote Republican again until. Something very unprofessional, again, <laughs> right. be insanely polite here, uh, decided to run. And and I don't – like that is not what I think demonstrates what we are as a country, what we should be, and who we're about. That's and I'm glad that you brought that up because we, we've kind of almost got to the point after the mm. 2020 election where we already had to deal with Trump once against oh, Biden. Right. Uh, I think people are really in the mindset of voting against Trump. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not it's not yeah. so much for Biden now this time around. It feels like it's either against Trump or you're just not voting. Or you're against Biden. It does it does go the other way. Here. Well, yeah, but those people are kind of already set. Like they're set and that's yes where they're no. at. I, I don't see a lot of the swing voters really swinging too much towards the Republican side this year, though. I'm not seeing that a lot of that. Like I saw in 2020 and the, the rhetoric at that I, time. I'm not I, seeing that. And, that. and I'm talking about from, from the different groups and the peoples and the individuals. Listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about this because I want to find out where we stand on this uh, uh, across the board because everybody's kind of on a, a, a different plateau on this. So we'll be back right after this. <sighs> Twelve eighty AM KYRO one oh two point five FM WIBH. Welcome back to the Q now. Mark Bland, Jason Cole, and our mm-hmm. guest today, Moshe K. I'm just gonna call him Moshe K. That way I don't just mess say up. Moshe, it's fine. Moshe, Moshe. just Moshe. I like that. That's a cool name though. Yeah, it like flows. it's cool that you said it's uh it's I guess a Hebrew so trace, things, a translation of uh, Moses. Moses is an English translation. Or English translation. I'm sorry. That that's what it means. Hebrew. Say. Hebrew being the first. Yes, correct. Uh, okay. I understand this. All right. I got it now. Remember? I figured it out now. <laughs> you know, uh, here's the weird thing. Was Hebrew at the time that we're talking about as prevalent as English is today as a language in 2024? Never. Never was. It was never that prevalent. It was the, it was the religious language of the Jewish people. And that was it. Um, now, there are similar-ish languages that are basically only kept alive today by Jews, like Aramaic, which were really big. That was the Babylonian language. Yeah. But Hebrew itself was the language of ancient Israel and the ancient Jewish people and basically was, was a, a minor language. There's possibly more people speaking now than when the Bible was written. Uh, well, yeah, sure. There's just literally more people on this earth now exactly. than there is. That, but I, I was just saying like that prevalency, like mm-hmm. that idea, mm-hmm. because Latin and Hebrew are very closely linked in their stylings. Correct. Like I'm not, I'm, that's not true. Not really. I would have, I thought Latin was within range or pretty close to Hebrew is not a romance language. It's not even close to the romance languages really. Interesting. Okay. I'm not well, a linguist. So I don't know. I have you no idea. Bring one of them on if you really that's fair. It. But no, uh, no, very, very different. No, that's okay. There's, there's two sounds in Hebrew that aren't even in, in any Romance languages. Nope. Really? The tzuh sound and the ch sound. So we have a name like tzemach. Or Hanukkah. 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 There you go. Yeah. But there's also the TZ sound. And uh, like when I had kids, my mom, who doesn't like saying either, is like, you, you can't name your kids with any of those in them because I, I want to be able to say their names. Like, she won't. She was, she was <laughs> worried like, about can't. the ability to physically pronounce <laughs> she's these like, things. You're, you're not allowed to name a kid. She can say them. Now, she's like, I don't want a kid, grandkid with, with now, those. <laughs> so <laughs> you're married? Uh, divorced. You're divorced. divorced. Uh, how old are your children? Uh, nine and ten. Just had a nine and ten. Boy and girl? Yep. Nice. One of each just like me. Perfect. It's it's a great way to have them. I mean, yes, it literally sir. is. Yes. Once you have one of each, there you go. It's a great way to have them, right? Because you get both sides of the game. <laughs> like you do, you get a little bit of both sides of the I game. I mean, I didn't like choose. You know, you just no. I know. I get. They, it. they just show up. I'm just saying. I enjoy <laughs> having one of each because like, it kind of oh, gets to show. Do you find yourself enjoying having one boy and a girl? Like, I mean, like, I enjoy my kids who they are. Had they come out differently, I'd have enjoyed them that way. But of I course, couldn't imagine yeah. them differently, right? Like, I can't imagine who they are as different than they are. But had they gotten two boys. Boys or two, like, you know, anyone who's in a parent situation, like you, you get what you get and, you know, you have fun with them. Kids are great. Kids are really fun to have. And I really enjoy having them. So, you know, I, I couldn't imagine them any other way because this is how they came here. But had they come here some other way, I'd say the same thing. 
Uh, have you, uh, now we had this question a few weeks ago, but it was just interesting. It popped into my head while you were talking there. Uh, have you, uh, introduced these children to some things from your life that you're just a big fan of? Uh, like, you know, like say, let's say you're a person who's a star Wars fan, right? You might introduce the kids at a very young age, right? To like That's lightsabers sad. when they're two and like grow, you raise them with that. Have you done that with your children? Have you introduced them? I was thinking about it for myself and I'm like, I, I, I didn't like, I was a professional wrestler for a living and I don't even push WWE and pro wrestling as a thing. Now my son loves it. But I've never really pushed it on him. I would have thought that was one of those things in my life, considering I made literally a living off of it, that I would have pushed onto my children, and I didn't. So that kind of caught me off guard. Is there anything you have? I mean, I, I both my my ex and I have, uh, as parents, tried to show them like the different kinds of music we like or different sure. musical tastes, just to give them. Is anybody uh, taken to? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. What's the? Was it? You said musical. It's musical. Yes. Uh, what kind of music are you into, sir? So my kids do like um, like eighties. Like my my ex is a big like Michael Jackson fan. Okay. Um, we both. Are, There's nothing wrong with being a Michael Jackson fan. It was a very popular guy. Uh, yeah, uh, you can be a fan of the Michael Jackson. <laughs> I can like his music. The guy might be a problem. Uh, the music's good. I didn't Maybe. ask you to marry we, him. We both, we I didn't ask you to marry him or date him. We, 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 we both. I'm way too old for him. Let's I didn't that. ask you. To be a, I didn't ask You're you to be an 11 40, year old. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, but you know like we both like uh, 70s like mo, you know 60s Motown 70s soul Stevie Wonder. Cool. Okay. And, and, so, right. and they like that. So the good news is my kids do have some good taste there. Uh, where they diverge is they're so so on rock music. You hit them with In Utero from Nirvana, and they were like, uh. you know, it's funny. I'm an Alice in Chains fan, but Nirvana never did it for me, and I don't know why. See, I'm not a big Alice in Chains fan. I'm not against it. Uh, I have uh, Alice in Chains songs that I'm a fan of, but well, outside of that, like I like Nirvana more than well, Alice in Chains. But if much. you want something hilarious. Who you like better, Nirvana or Alice in Chains? Probably, we both chose our side. I'm sorry. I probably like Nirvana better, but it's really cool. It's almost like a Beatles Doors thing. You gotcha. Know? It's like, no, that's fair. The, like, with Alice in Chains? That's a Beatles Doors. Oh, like Alice in Chains reminds me very much of the Doors. They're the dark group of that group of I bands. I do see that. They're the Where outlier. Where does Soundgarden the dark fall into that? Soundgarden's like probably the Who, maybe Pearl Jam's Rolling Stones. Pa- Pearl, Pearl, Pearl Jam, Jam is the Rolling Pearl, Stones. Yeah, Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. If you listen to them, are both like classic rock with a '90s twist. They shared the same drummer. Right, but like they're, oh, they're, yeah. they really sound like classic rock, yeah. right? Pearl Jam, like 10 is a classic rock album in many ways. It's by, by years old. It no, sounds no. great. <laughs> you're, you're dating us, sir. We're, we know we're all old men, okay? Yeah, you don't have to just call dudes. it a classic rock yeah. album quite yet, okay? No, but I mean, it sounded like an album from the 70s. That's you what I'm going with. I don't think so, though. I don't uh. feel like that album ever felt like anything. Like I'm sure that there's similar musical stylings that we could tap I, into. That's I, what I was that's where I'm going with. It. I'm not saying it's the yeah, like yeah, yeah. but like if it came out in the seventies, it would have been like, this is a new sound we haven't heard. They'd be like, oh, this is good stuff. I uh, sure. I legitimately bought Soundgarden Louder and Love new in nineteen eighty nine, along with Mother Love Bone when I was in Chicago on vacation with my parents. Nice. So I had them before. I knew what was going on. See I'm the baby of the group. But I, I didn't have Nirvana six. though. I didn't <laughs> have Nirvana. You're the baby of six? No, yeah. I was the baby. I was six years old in eighty nine. Oh I see. Oh, yeah. yeah. In nineteen 19- <laughs> You uh, so you were born in eighty three. Yeah, uh, he is a young man. I wasn't quite young driving man. Yet. I was. I, was yeah, I just there. look old. It's all the gray in the beard. It's just... <laughs> we're just old men. That's our problem. Yeah, we we're just old. Look and we're old. Yeah, we're just old. But no, funny, the it. funny. I posted one... a picture on Twitter. Boy, they tore into me uh, calling me names and saying I look bad and old and this that, and the other. And I'm like. Yeah, I got diabetes and I'm not aging right. well. Like it's just not <laughs> working out for me, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I had one guy call me Fat Boy. <laughs> really? Yeah, he called me Fat Boy. Yeah, you look like it. <laughs> right. real, real, I mean, real chunker. Really? Yeah, you're a real really? chunker, yeah. Jay. Yeah, on my on Twitter one time. One time. Uh, but no, it's funny you bring up professional wrestling. I showed it my my kids once. I'm like, oh, my son's gonna love this. He's young. He has his dad's ADD. He bounces off walls. He's gonna love like professional wrestling. Sure. He. Found it boring, no interest at all. My daughter thought it was great. Thought it was awesome, right. I took her to AEW for her eighth birthday because she like got super into it. She's like, oh, there they have go. all the lady wrestling. She loved watching the girls sure. wrestle. So uh, of my kids, like you never know what you're going to get. And my daughter <laughs> is not tomboyish particularly. She's just like, this is super fun. I love it. I'm like, it okay, fun. kid. There, yeah, that's, that's listen. I really thought because it was my world, my kids were going to tap into this and it was going to be part of our lives and all this, that, and the other. 
And uh, it was part of our lives on my end. But uh, now my son, he took to wrestling. Like I said, he likes it. He doesn't have a problem with it. You know, he'll, he'll go to shows and he'll enjoy it for what it's worth. He's not like me. He didn't become what I would consider like a super fan. To, to the point where, like, I did it to the point where, I, as I was growing up, I decided, oh, I want to do that for a living. Like, I want to go put my body on the line and be friends with this guy and that guy and travel the world and do all kinds of fun things. Like, other people aren't like that. Some people, you know what? What's a weird, do you have any weird fandoms? Do you have any weird fandoms? Like, that you're anything that you're a fan of that's a, a weird thing that other people, like, there are people that follow Bruce Springsteen around. I'm not against Bruce Springsteen, and I like Bruce Springsteen's music. I am not following that, man. I mean, they're going to multiple I, concerts a year I, in multiple cities. I'm like, stop it. There are people, That is too much work for one are, guy, and he are, doesn't even have the best of the music that they, ever existed. They, I like his music, but it ain't the best. Like There are people I've heard call into Stern that have been to like 300 and that's, more shows in their life. That's not Gary, I'm sorry. Papa Boo has been to over 100. Oh my God! A hundred. I don't think times? I've been to a hundred concerts. That's I, a lot of concerts. That's a lot of boss. That's, one, that's a guy. lot of boss. That's a lot of boss. You but, you can't get. Uh, oh. I mean, but Mark's right. Like I like Bruce Springsteen, but to me, he's he's like fire pit guy. Like put put one of his albums on on a fire pit. I'm not necessarily so we have that this category of music that we call the fire pit music, yeah. which if is like play it during a Tom Petty. Pit. Anything Tom, Tom Petty, Petty can be fire pit Eagles. music. Eagles, that's yeah. totally fine there. Put that on. You can play Friends in Low Places. You can't get too <laughs> can deep with the guards. You can play a couple country. of songs, but that's about it. We're like, not getting too country. But but but, but you'll play you, Friends you in put, Low you Places. Put, you put like that's Pink okay. Floyd in this or no? Pink Floyd can be in there. Sure. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You get there one o'clock in the morning, and we got the whiskey flowing, and everybody. Have a good time. Yeah, some Floyd, some Maybe. comfortably numb's gonna hit that that airway. Crosby Stills, Nash and Young made the oh, cut. Oh, especially sure. Deja Vu. Why not? Yeah, thank Deja you. Vu all thank the time. you. Deja Vu's fantastic. Uh, at yeah. sixteen, when I when I when I first could drive, I stole two albums from my parents to listen to in the car. <laughs> One was Deja Vu, and the other was Lou Reed's New York. Oh, ah. I never gave them back. Fantastic <laughs> albums. You still have them? Uh, somewhere, Actually, right? I might. I might. One of them, I think Lou Reed died, but somewhere, I think I still have Crosby Stills, Nash and Young. I got. Uh, I bought Lou Reed on uh, Transformer on vinyl when I first got uh, a, a turntable. That was one of my first ones. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about it much. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit. I, I'm not sure if we're going to do a ranker review on this show or not. We possibly it's might. I, like, I think that Moshe would have a good time with a ranker review. I think he would. Basically, with ra- a ranker review, we take a ranker list, the top ten, and we break down whether the list is accurate or whether things need to be juxtaposed and moved around and switched out. And it's a little game we like to play and have a little fun with. Talk about are you big movie file? Are you big into movies and TV shows, things I, like I that? I have these bizarre gaps where I'll know nothing and then I'll know everything. So, I don't know. Throw <laughs> some out there. And he I'll said, I'll right. know nothing and then I'll know you everything. You can do that with movies. Like, if you say a movie I know, I'll know it. If you say like a bunch of movies I should know that I don't. I well, don't. we choose it's, the you know? we choose the list based off of the front page of Ranker and whatever the top lists oh, are boy. there. So okay. like it could go anywhere. We've actually done Make baseball it an old players. Man list. If you remember, we did baseball players <laughs> we one did, night. We did. We did baseball players I, one I, night. I, so I, I, I follow football. You can talk all about football, baseball. I got nothing. <laughs> football, I follow. And okay, if uh, we're following football, Rasheed Rice, I'm going to need you to calm down, homie. I'm going to need you to stop. Listen, at listen. The rate he's going to be they down have in told a cell. you. <laughs> they have told you we're trying to figure this situation out and work with it. We need you to lay low. They mean it. Yeah, lay low, bro. <laughs> like if you want to continue to have a job in the NFL, lay low. He should start right now about. Uh, Who was it? Willie? What's his name? Uh, was it last year or the year before? The the wide receiver from the Raiders who hit the people and killed them. Uh, Ruggs. Henry Ruggs. Ruggs. Henry Ruggs. Henry Ruggs. I'm sorry. Like yeah, yeah. Set that woman Same on situation. Fire like, like another crazy car situation that just just over the top and wild and people got hurt and now their whole – and it's like, guys, all you got to do is just – you have enough money. Yeah, calm the Listen, F down. I watch TV shows where New York lawyers, and I'm sure you saw this with your own eyes in New York all the time with all those hedge fund managers and bankers and everybody. 
They've just got drivers that take Lexuses and all over the city, and they just jump in the back call seat. Call Uber. And they just drive. Listen. Call Uber. All of you guys can just ride home to your house at a normal speed <laughs> or have some friend or a family member drive right. you home. Like, you're rich. You could have a Lexus pull up with a driver take you to your house. Like, I don't understand how you would ever put yourself in a crazy situation like that. Call Uber. Yeah. If you're drunk, don't drive. Call Uber, right? This is like, it works as well for the everyday guys. It when, works for Rasheed when, Rice as it works for Patrick Rose. When Moshe, if you're that drunk to drive, call friggin' Uber. Don't kill somebody. Jason, do you notice when Moshe mm. comes on our show? Listen, when, when people from school boards come on our show, yes. they win. They do. They, that's the crude ass bump, I like yep. to call it. That's what I call it. <laughs> the crude ass we bump. We are crass, right? but we get the job the done. The crass ass bump. That's mm-hmm. what I like to call it. Moshe comes on the show. You know what you get? The more you know. You get, you get good moral ethics and ideas, things that yes. you can use in life. These aren't even life hacks. Call Uber. Call this Uber. This shouldn't be a life hack. This shouldn't be hard. This is <laughs> this is, this is, this is like below concept. common sense, right? Like, you know. Don't get loaded and then drive around. Right. Like, have fun drinking, go party, enjoy yourself, but call Uber on your way home. This All is right. not rocket science. There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break here on the queue now. When we come back, we might play a ranker review. We might talk a little bit about uh, these campus protests and what's going on in the world. I haven't decided where. Listen, I haven't decided where we're going to go yet. But you guys know we always want to aim to entertain you. That's that's our main goal here. That's why me and Jason jump on, bring great people like Moshe onto the show every single week, so that you could all be entertained. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more entertainment for you. We'll be back right after this. Hey yo! Welcome back to the Q now. Mark Bland, Jason Call, and our guest Girl. Moshe hanging out with us today, hey. talking about a bunch of fun Straight things, hey. lots of fun things. But let's get into some more fun things because uh, right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have have or have not been paying attention around the world, mm-hmm. there is an uptick in what I would like to call. An ancient feud, okay? Mm-hmm. Except not that for, ancient. You, you, it's not that ancient? It's not that ancient of a feud? I, I would feel like, how, how long has it been? 1948. It's, oh, but by they, country. By country, but like, I'm talking about the... Talking the, about the biblical the, stuff. The, the background <laughs> and the religious aspects of this side and that side existing and not... Playing go, go along back, has been back. going on well before go 1948. Back, go, go back before 48, and you were safer living in a Muslim country than a Christian one for hundreds of years. Possibly. Possibly. No, no, statistically. I have no idea. I do. I, I, well, I don't. Baghdad I, was one third Jewish in 1900. It went Jew free in the 1950s. That community dates to Nebuchadnezzar. And, and the, biblically, when he destroyed sure. the first temple, took the Jews to, to Babylon, which is modern day Iraq. Right. That Jewish community never left and was there in Iraq from Nebuchadnezzar double times to the 1950s when Baghdad, in 1900, Baghdad's one third Jewish and that community is now completely gone. So when you say ancient, not really, that's actually surprisingly modern. We think it's old, but it's like, I mean, we're old, but like on one person's life, sure. But like ancient to ancient, no, it's actually kind of new. For the sake of the conversation, let's, let's preface this with something important Mm. um we're talking about muslims and jewish individuals now when we talk about these two different sides of religion so that people understand because i don't think it's talked about much when these these topics come up on a lot of different programs and people interview and talk about these things what is the real so in the Muslim religion, right, they also have Muhammad, and they have prophets, correct? Sure. And they also have that in the Jewish religion, correct? We don't have Muhammad. You don't have Muhammad. We, we, don't, have, we don't think about prophets the way they do. Like we have you know, Moses, there's biblical guys who brought down prophecy, but we view it very differently. Our, our religions are somewhat different in this way, but I don't think this is really a religion. So thing. is, okay, so would you say that is the Jewish religion in itself mutually exclusive, 
closer in stylings to Catholicism and Christianity and that that side of things, or Muslim religions and the more ancient religions that kind of fall in set with Islam that. more recent than Christianity. Muhammad lived in 600 A.D. Sure, Christ. okay. So Catholicism is actually older. Muslims a newer religion. And uh, to be fair... Um, so how does the Muslim break in? I think that that's where, like, I think that that's where that's in? not... Ask, ask them. Well, that's why I'm curious, right? Like, so both, both because nobody ever talks about these things. So two things. So like it's both, not talked about. So both Christianity and Islam are evangelical in that you go out and convert sure. people. Judaism is not. We don't convert people. Famously, if you try to convert to Judaism, we tell you no three times before we say yes and then talk to you about it. So we don't try to convert anybody. And we think that you don't need to be Jewish to go to heaven. So you can be totally righteous and live a righteous, great life, not Jewish. We don't think anyone needs to be Jewish. Um, and, you know, we find ways to complain and joke about everything. Right. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, as a culture. But like really, but like religiously, we don't, we are non-evangelical as a religion, both Christianity and Islam, evangelical religions. So both of them wind up spreading a ton and Judaism never does. So there's 15 million Jews in the world today and there's over a billion and a half each of Christians and Muslims. Sure. Right. Because they're always out there prosperous. Right. And, and there isn't a fight today. The fight is not between Jews and Muslims. I have no issue with Muslims. There's plenty of Muslims who protected their Jewish communities from Hitler, Italy, Azerbaijan, Morocco, Beiran, still, still all of Jews. So there's plenty of, of, there's plenty of places where, where Jews and Muslims live side by side. There's no problem whatsoever. There's, there's plenty of Muslims who fight for the Israeli defense forces. So I don't think this is a religious war. And even framing it that way is wrong. Fair enough. Um, so let's move on to our topic here in, re- in relation to the campus protests and what we were talking about. In a shocking incident at the University of Mississippi, a white student counter-protester was caught on camera making monkey noises towards a black protester during ongoing Gaza solidarity demonstrations. The video, filmed by Stacey Spieler, shows the counter-protester hooting like a monkey while the black woman was live-streaming the event on her phone, referring to black people as monkeys as a known racist trope that has been justified through Jim Crow, uh, slavery and Jim Crow laws. The university has launched an investigation into the incident and highlights the need for continued awareness and education to combat racism and, and discrimination. Now, this is on the tail of these protests that are going on nationwide, currently at multiple campuses, to the point and to the level that it literally... Smacked you right in your face walking the dog the other day, correct, Moshe? Yep. Friday evening before Shabbat, I am walking the dog. Now, for, for those who are listening and not seeing, uh, I am a huge guy, and I am walking a 140-pound dog. So uh, I'm not worried about physical confrontation particularly. Um, and in, in fairness, the, the protesters in St. Louis were, were not being physically confrontational. But I did literally walk out my house, and there is a, a protest, and they would tell you they're pro-Palestinian. But some of the flags are explicitly anti-Semitic. What they're doing and saying is explicitly anti-Semitic. I'm not defending some counter-protester who's a racist piece of crap. Frankly, he deserves to be branded as such because that's inappropriate. Um, also, I, I don't know how they would deal with the fact that plenty of us, we come in all different colors. Jews are not just white. We, we Sure. Right? Like, again, what do you think all those guys from Iraq look right, like exactly right what do you think the ethiopian jews look like i have a buddy who, whose family comes out of rwanda and they are <laughs> and they never converted they're they're jewish orthodox he's an ultra orthodox jew lives in the most orthodox community in the states married and he is looks like his family comes from rwanda his dad's great and hilarious he's great and hilarious we just make fun of him all the time but like <laughs> like we come like so one like i don't have any tolerance for this racist crap either but like so skip that but when you put up a sign with red hands which is a symbol that comes from a terrorist event where literally a terrorist found a couple of Jewish reservists in Ramallah, which is not a Jewish city. It's a Palestinian one in the West Bank. Kills them. They get stabbed these two guys to death. They were not doing anything official. Right. Um, shows the hands to a screaming, adoring crowd, and that's where the red hands come from. And later in the day, what isn't the famous pictures, you have to search hard to find them, there's pictures of them having like literally ripped these guys' hearts out and walking around with yeah. it and showing up. Oh, it's I'm sure. Awful. I'm sure. Right? So that's where this red hand picture comes from. So when you, when you, when you protest with that, right, to me, that's explicit. I want to kill Jews, yes. Right. And, and yeah. when, when people start screaming, you know, Intifada revolution, Intifada now, uh, you've heard death to America. I like, did hear that, this is, yeah. These are calls for, for, Intifada is violent resistance, right? These are calls for violence against Jews everywhere. And what we're talking about is people being, supporting violence against me here in the States. I'm not Israeli, I'm, I'm from 
St. Louis. But there's no differentiation between that in the minds of those individuals because you're Jewish. And that, doesn't really matter or, what, or, like, or, period. Or, or they'll be like, well, it's okay if you're Jewish if you have the right ideas. And I think that's a bunch of BS. BS, right. Exactly. And, you know, like, Zionism is part of our religion, and it doesn't mean what they say it means. It means you believe Israel should exist in some form. It doesn't mean Palestine shouldn't exist, too. It is not mutually exclusive with that. It just means that Jews should have a, their own homeland somewhere. It is literally biblical. You hear about it in still the Old Testament for you, right? Like, this, is, this goes on forever. But I'll say this. When you want to think about these protests, when I hear people screaming that and, and literally having terrorist signs up, I'm like, look, we as a society, even the far right agreed that all those tiki torch schmucks saying <laughs> Jews will not replace us. Right. None of them are good people. Right. No uh, good people in that crowd. Correct. You cannot march around with a no, tiki torch. Wait, the president said, well, he said they're just got good guys on both sides. Some of them were good people on both, both sides. Hey, I mean, I'm saying if you, are, if you are if you are running <laughs> and that around, that was Donald Trump that said that. So, you know, it means it's right? true. Hey, He's the most I'm president saying, ever. If you're running around with a tiki torch <laughs> saying Jews will not replace us. Yeah, two things. Not be a good one. Dude. Nobody over there with you is a good person. And two, we actually think that's a challenge. Like, like, I actually want to replace all of them. Like, if you're hanging out with a bunch of dudes you just met, and one of them breaks that out, you might want to leave. Yeah, no, I, like, I was, I, I was like, talking oh, about the- oh, this is what's happening? Oh, I'm going to go home then, So man. you'll find this here, so, so my, my, my ex-wife is is uh, a mixed race Jewish woman. Her father was, was black. Uh, I have a buddy who's a black Jewish guy. And so me and my buddy were discussing that we take this as a personal challenge. Like, okay. How do we have enough kids to replace all of them? We're like, we actually want, we actually want non-white Jews to replace every single person there, just like they say they're afraid of. What you we, that's to, a personal challenge. What you have to do is you have to hope that most people that you love and like and care for, even in the smallest way, are smart enough not to do this. But what you need to do is promote online not using car seat or seatbelt. No, yeah. And like then human selection Darwinism. So Let that just handle itself. Yeah. Will inevitably have car accidents. But, but, but back to the point. But back to the point, yeah. right? <laughs> like even the right wing, that hasn't happened again. And they yeah. and most of them eventually came around to that's a bad idea. Right, and that was pushed out. Some, but then they most, to, I said they, most. They're trying to dip their toe in this. Right, but they, they, it, like that hasn't that right hasn't now. come back. Like that hasn't come yeah. back. I, I credit them, right? And there's a lot of far right Jews who say Trump never said that. I disagree with them, but like, <laughs> right. but like, there's still Jews over there. It's on right? video, but whatever. Right. Exactly. I'm like, uh, look at the YouTube. Like, <laughs> right. like you can just listen to. It. Well, well, it has all this context. I'm like, the context doesn't make it better. Context. It makes it worse. What context? But, like, just just what watch context? it. Right. And what context? Yeah. I'm like, liking Hitler. Oh, like you're not right. super now, bad. Now, so my comment is, we agree that if you run around the tiki torch as a neo-Nazi screaming for violence against me, that that's bad. Yes. Me, my people, and everyone related to. But if you do it in a way that you claim is pro-Palestinian, that that's acceptable. That deeply bothers me yeah. because you're calling for violence, well, right? And you're calling for and you're calling for people who are literally so genocide. What and you're that's not now, acceptable. but okay, fair enough. What you're also arguing now is the latter shades of gray in most situations. And that's, <laughs> that's where... What, that's Antifada where the, and Antifada revolution is not a shade of gray. Stop. Stop. <laughs> you're now... No, I'm saying that the way people in America... Okay? Like, you're here in America, right? The yeah. campuses are here in America. You can this hear is my where, accent. This I'm is from where, here. This is, no, I'm saying, though, this conversation is being based on this idea of how we view and how we're talking about things in America. Okay. I don't think in America the way the Jews feel persecuted by the world after World War II, the way that's viewed, I don't feel that in America... The Jews are viewed that way by the white culture that is supposedly the Zionist culture half the time in all of the arguments of everything that constantly is talked about. Uh, I don't think that they're viewed in such a prejudicial way here the way they're viewed in the other parts of the world as prejudicially. And so I feel like when slavery is the topic, because of that close, just black versus white aspect of it that it could have been any white family and any white person that enslaved any black family and any black person. Now everybody's on the board all the time throughout the rest of history as either on one side or the other. 
The problem where I see with this conversation. So what do you say about Asians? But here's my point. The problem I see with this conversation is the fact that it's what, like I said, the later shades of gray with it. It's, it's not a thing being viewed by the individuals that you want that attention from the same way as it's viewed by other people and other parts of the world. So a regular, what you would consider white, Catholic, Irish person, but from Europe, because it's Ireland, views the prejudice within the religions and against Judaism and Jewish religions and all the religions, like the way they view how these interactions in these religions and the way that they view the prejudices within them, they're not marked out the same. Are they the same in style? For sure. They totally are. Should they be viewed in the same light? I feel that they should. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying that if we're to like back up out of the fire, larger picture on it, it seems like where the disconnect is for a lot of people is right where where I just said. It's that idea that the way they view the religious aspect of how Jews have been persecuted over the years versus the physical aspect of slavery and how these individuals were persecuted over well, the well, years. First off, first off, why, that's why, where why, they why, do that. Two things. One, oppression Olympics is dumb. Right, my experience is not the experience of my ancestors. Is not the experience of somebody who's African American ancestors. Is not the experience of somebody who is from a a, a marginalized or not marginalized group somewhere else. Correct. One hundred percent correct. Idiotic. That doesn't make one better or worse. Correct. Right? Doesn't and, make one better or worse. And and the idea that that you, because I'm not black and I'm not when I go out with all my buddies, Chuck, who uh, introduced us, is very sure. much black. I'm often the only guy with my skin tone around. Not just the only guy with the guy. I'm the only guy with my skin That's tone fair. for That's fine. In, in the city. You know, look on more than one occasion, like the comedy routine, I've got to be the one talking to the cops because we all know when we're out. <laughs> like when we were young in twenties, you know, young twenties and stupid. Look at, look at that stereotype <laughs> like, just rearing its ugly head again. I mean, I, I'm like literally interjecting between my buddy who is African American and a group of cops pulling out billy clubs. This has happened in life, right? I, I like it is right, my that's job. His life, right? Like this is this is St. Louis. The cops are racist. People ask right. me why 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 all the protests are breaking out. I'm like, no. The question is what took so long. Like hmm. like the cops have been racist in this city for and, a long you know, time. The sooner we all just agree with it and move on, the easier right, like, it's going to be. Like, I don't, I don't get that we're in Yamaka. <laughs> Cops are fine to me in Yamaka. There's no police problem with the Yamaka. Now, I have a lot of other issues. I've had people fight me and call me racial slurs for being Jewish. And I've had it when I've practiced Judaism. I've had it when I didn't practice Judaism. It doesn't matter if you're religious or not because you're Jewish by ethnicity. You're Jewish by type of person, right? You get to face violence. You get to face discrimination in the workplace. You get to face discrimination in schools. And it's more obvious here in the middle of the country than it is in sure. New York, but now New York's almost worse than here. All right. Moshe, hold on for one second. We're going to take a quick break on the show. When we come back, we're going to continue on with our topic, and uh, we're going to get the rest of your opinions on this. Okay? Cool. We'll be back right after this. Twelve eighty AM K Y R O the Q now. Mark Blanche, Jason Call, and Moshe Coppolo, our guest, joining us today. My board is breaking as we speak, and just smash it with a hammer. Smash it with a hammer. Smash it with a hammer. I tell you, big should things. do that. Everybody knows that. We've Come been on. talking about Judaism, and we've been talking about Muslims, and we've been talking about religion. Yes. And we've been talking about. The way that individuals, when we discuss these different minority groups as they are categorized here in the United States of America, um, and how they're viewed by the individuals within the United States of America. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I am a middle class, white, Catholic kid you from are. the Midwest, a very conservative area. Everybody around me I You're grew up was conservative. conservative the parents of them were conservative. Did I know Jewish kids? Of course I knew Jewish kids. Did I know a lot of Jewish kids? I did not know a lot of Jewish kids. I, My I views, that. though, on Jewish individuals were formed specifically by my world around me and the individuals who influenced me. My parents didn't talk about Jews in a negative way or bring them up much in my house growing up 
as a person. That's fine. So you're, you're Jewish. They as were, long as you're not insulting us, that's fine. They we're, were never, <laughs> we're happy to be left alone. <laughs> really? And that's really literally, literally what I was just live getting, and let live, baby. This is literally what I was just getting ready to say. I don't think there's no harm, no foul when you have a lifestyle that you are growing up in a household that has that type of a background. Now, that's also probably a lot dependent on where we're at. That more rural middle part of the country, right? Mm. Where there isn't a lot of infiltration from other ethnicities, other religions, other all kinds of things. They just don't break into the Midwest so as I'm much as infiltrator for, for I would three say to six generations here in, in St. Louis. That's fair, and there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Like no you're arguing whether you exist or not, and I'm saying in mass or not in mass. There's a like I, mean, St. Louis I obviously has had fifty thousand Jews obviously, since nineteen hundred, give or take. Sure, but I don't consider that in Moss compared sure. to the three million people that live in the area. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, like, for sure. We're a small I'm not, I'm not trying yeah, to no, like you, you can, you can easily knock miss us. anybody. I'm not trying to knock anyone. Yeah, no I'm problem. just saying. We're easy to miss. My point being simply, I am a pretty prototypical version of a guy like mm. Jason. Yes. You grew up in Iowa. I did. Not St. Louis. But I have, also I have the Midwest. lived away from Iowa longer than I lived in Iowa. Sure, that's fine. You grew up in Iowa. Moved to Illinois and then down here. Then moved to Illinois and then down here. But then you graduated high school in Iowa. I did. So you grew up My in Iowa. Years were... I understand, like, but with, with, I don't like what I believe that you know what I'm saying. Like, I've I've moved away. Like what I thought then, it's changed. Oh well, of course you're going to change really as you grow lot. up and become older. But being from Iowa doesn't really have a lot with what I believe. Listen, in. Like, no I understand really that. Like me I had a lot of terrible ideas at 18. I would hope everyone's <laughs> matured since then. Who gets older. Listen, I understand that there are people right now listening to this conversation, and they're thinking in their mind, Mark sounds a little bit like. He, he kind of could be sort of bigoted or he's kind of going down these roads. No, no, no. I want you guys to understand that the conversation I want to have is a deeper conversation. It's going to take a while to get to certain spots. And it's also going to be one of those things where it's, it's not going to be easy to get to those conversations. Mm-hmm. They're going to be difficult to have. And, and accepting the fact that certain things are the way they are yes. is a part of tough conversations. I hate to say that. Yeah. And so when I take the entire United States as a whole, Top to bottom, side to side, okay? I understand there is a large section of people that live in the Midwest. They do not have the same infiltrations, as you like to say. That was your word. That was your word. I don't like to say that. You said infiltrator. I was was quoting you. When you play back on the air, go listen to it. That's what I didn't say infiltrator. Oh, yeah, you did. No, I did not. Infiltrations, baby. How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet? Uh, we're pl- well, I got a 20 on it. Oh, I got a 20, goodness, This is a bad man over here. I got a 20 right here. Baby. I never said. Oh, no. We got the tape. We got the tape. Oh, we do 20. have the tape. It's right here. It's right we here. We got the 20. All right. Fair All right, enough. Fair enough. Say. Pull all 20 right. out, baby. Come on. That's fine. During no, a listen. Break, there's listen. Some to all of listening. you people out there, we're going to rewind the tape. We'll listen back. I don't even have a 20 in my wallet. Stop this. You're putting <laughs> money away. What are you doing? This is weird. I'm flashing that big cash. Jesus Christ, DraftKings. <laughs> calm down, okay? My goodness. Oh. This guy's over here laying down parlay can, bets see, on can, what things were said on the show. We can see showing. how serious you are about your position right oh, now. Oh, no. We're going to rewind it. We'll find out how serious I am. It's going to be real simple. Man. All right. Now. I don't know where to go at this point. <laughs> okay, I really don't. I, we were talking about campus protests. Who do protesting. you think you are, Lee Iacocca? You know, Moshe, <laughs> I, I do want to do, do do you justice on this because it's one of the topics you said you did want to talk about. Um, when it comes to these campus protests, obviously there's two sides to every issue, every discussion, right? Hamas and the Palestinians have their argument for why they feel they do it at the same point. The Israelis and the Jewish individuals, which is relatively, I would say, recognized by Israel. They kind of are like, you would say, the parent state. Would you say it's the parent state? They're the Jewish state. The homeland, but the the parent state. They're they're, they're the Jewish state. They're explicitly a Jewish state. So with this being said, they, they are the two sides here. And in this case right now, what we're dealing with, Jason, Hamas is in the wrong. Straight up. First off, yeah, they there's started no agreeing with Hamas. We don't even need to go any further than they started the fight. Like you can agree with Palestinians. They threw the first people, punch. But not Hamas. 
Yeah. That's where the line totally is. Yeah. Straight yeah. So that, is, that, is an excellent, that is an excellent point. Right? The, it doesn't the, get made enough. The, yeah. pal- the Palestinian people are fantastic individuals. They're fine. But hey, Tomas, their leadership. As well. The problem is they got guns on them. See, I understand why but the Palestinians are playing along. They're being used as body shields, and they're telling the people across the, the street from them who are angry and looking back with their guns and, and rockets and going, hey, listen, we don't want to be in this position, but he's holding a gun on me. They're going to kill know, my old family, and they said I have to be a body shield. So I really kind of got to play along with this guy right now. You know what, like, I got to play along with him. You know what Palestine is? I don't have is? a choice. This is what Palestine is right now is someone threw a party, invited some shady dudes, and then now the shady dudes have kind of taken over, and all the people at the party are left with these shady dudes. And that's kind of Hamas. They like Palestinian. They voted them in. Like Hamas is their ruling government. That is true. They have made this decision, and now they're stuck with these crazy dudes who are running the party. So, in that respect, they're not necessarily blameless. But no one wants them blown up. But when you say that, suddenly, like you don't support Israel, and that's insane too. So, as far as I know, right now, there is either a ceasefire. On the table, or it's already been drafted, it's put together. But apparently it changed to what Israel agreed to. Israel they- never agreed to anything. Hamas said we want... Israel never agreed to anything. Well, like the Hamas said, Hamas said we want this, and then they said yeah. we agree to this. But, like, they didn't agree. So, like, yeah. if one side says I agree to a deal... And then they changed it. But the it, deal though, is like... The that, that literally, you were right... <laughs> like, the deal requires release of 50 Palestinians. It includes a requirement to release... Um, major terrorists who Israel has in captivity. It requires no prosecution of, of crimes, including October 7th, and it requires uh, complete military, Israel pulling out completely the Gaza Strip. Israel will not agree to that. I, you know, that is what they said they agreed to. Israel doesn't agree. Now, whether or not you think there should be a deal or not, let's, can I that's what it piece, is. Can I add a Israel piece does this? not agree to that. That's the point. Can I add a piece to this? Yes. The idea that Israel does not agree. I have talked about this topic on this show. This show specifically, not today, but over the entire history of this show for its 14 years mm-hmm. of its existence. Okay? Oh, I've talked God. about this topic many different times at different times and generational periods over that 14 years. But I feel like the problem we have right now today, mm-hmm. when Hamas threw this last punch, There have been 50 lines drawn in the sand over the years, okay? Over the last 75 years straight, okay? 50 lines have been drawn in the sand. And every time there's been someone stepped over the line. I feel like Israel has gotten to a point, the Jewish state has gotten to a point where they are like, we're not playing games anymore. We're done. Like, this is line 51 right here. We're not taking no for an answer. We're punching you in the face. We're having Thunderdome. We're getting to the end of this problem now. They are are attempting to dismantle the military wing of Hamas that currently still exists and has active battalions in Gaza. That is the only politically viable thing for the Israelis. doesn't matter what I think. I'm not Israeli. I don't vote there, right? What would you do if you were in charge? What would I do if I was in charge? Yep. You're in charge of the situation. You stand on the side of Israel, and the, you're not Yahoo. You're standing at the top, bro. What, I'm what? not Netanyahu. How do you feel I'm like? Not, I'm no, not even a Netanyahu fan. Fine. You don't even have to be a fan. I don't care. He's the guy in charge. I'm saying, like, you're in that position. How do you? How would you proceed? What would you try to do? What do you think's a good idea? You've obviously thought about these things. You don't research it and look these things up to talk about it to not have your own opinions and thoughts on it. So I'm sure. I'm curious. Netanyahu appears to be drawing it out. For either political, domestic political reasons, which is pretty gross, um, frankly. From for uh, domestic to Israel or to the United States? Domestic, to his domestic, needs. His domestic to his domestic. Okay. Because he has major hot water in Israel for allowing the biggest security failure. Oh, they were getting ready to vote him out right well, before this right. happened. And to be fair, if they voted today, there's what? a strong likelihood he's He'd be out. still going. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has, they didn't want him. He has criminal charges hanging over him. Correct. So, so, so he's, he wants to he's be, a Trump. So he's also, right? so he's a he's Trump. Al- so he's also so. worried. He has significant worries domestically, politically. So drag out this right. war. So- 
so while the war is on, if he drags it out, he gets to stay in power. I think that's absolutely. So if you put me in power, one, I wouldn't be taking the money and doing all the dirty stuff. That's also maybe why I'm not him. Um, well, he's the one who also eradicated their court over there. They yeah. can't. The, the, uh, the, the court, skip the court thing. The, the right wing, regardless of Netanyahu, wanted the court law because the court there is not representative of the people. And this causes problems, as I'm sure you can notice that when the court here isn't representative of the electorate at all, yes. that it causes issues. Sure. But the problem that wound up is, is the guy trying to change it isn't trying to do it to make it match the electorate more, which is probably a good idea, even if you don't like where that goes because right. you're not uh, as religious or whatever. But like having your electorate match your populace in a democracy is always the is, best is, move. Is, is usually what demo- democracies do okay, right? So I, I don't mind that idea. I mind it being done by a guy who just wants to do it to get out of corruption charges. That's gross. I can't support it while yes. he's doing it. That's right. But the actual moves trying to be made, I'm not against. It's that Netanyahu's trying to get out of corruption charges. Uh-uh, buddy. You, if you do the crime, you go to court. It's a democracy. They got a real court there. You should face justice like anyone else should. If like, So that's my view on that that's little right. thing. Right? right. But but as far as being on the top, I think, frankly, they should have done what they're doing now, earlier, without all the, the, the will-they-won't-they games about Rafa. Because mm. if the military goal is you have to go in, you have to get rid of the Hamas battalions, and it's going to be bad and it's going to suck, well, the longer you drag it out, the more you're going to have death. The worse it's going to be at this point. Yes, you need a little while to plan. We're past whatever that planning point is, right? Yeah, you had to have an idea before. Right. Well, they had, an and idea. the problem is you can't just go so, in so and I, take so, out a situation and then back off so, and so, go. See, I was right. It's like we don't know if you're right until you go in and do so, the situation. So, like we we know we know that there's Hamas battalions there. There's probably some hostage left alive. Unfortunately, many are probably dead already, given the conditions. And well, and some of them just probably them. died. Just yeah, because just lack from, yeah. of medications, well, Hamas we, had to probably run out. Well, we, well, we also know that they were tortured. Oh, There's yeah. evidence. For of sure. Oh, obviously, yeah, other, that would happen. Event, if you're tortured for 30 plus days on end, you you're might not die, make yeah. it. Yeah, unfortunately. So there's a lot of terrible parts of that, and they're not. And trading back is ha- like yeah. isn't like just makes them do it more. But like it, that's it, what it, got us here. You know what I do with those guys? They say I say, you know what? You want these 50 armed terrible terrorists? Yes. Here you go. But then I have a Mossad in each jail with them, and they bump up into them. Boom. Stick them with the needle. They don't even know what happened. They just feel an itch. Ooh. Put a tracker in each and every one of those every guys. So, but, so, but, but, every, but, I mean, every, every time one of these guys um, dies in jail or something, that, yes. that Israel gets blamed, even if it's a natural cause or something. Like, there's... It's it's one of those no good yeah. solutions, but we're talking about actual terrorists yeah. here. That's so, what I'm saying. You- and, and, but like, and I'll agree. There's people in, in Gaza who want food, but like, you can't even send food in while Hamas is there because they steal it and use it for themselves yes. and keep it from the populace to try to play this game. Correct. So what? If you ask me what I would have done, I would have already tried to be in there on as quick a timetable as was safe because I wouldn't try, be trying to draw it out to keep myself in power. And I would be trying to go in there to actually do the military goal of rooting them out yep. so we can try to figure out how to all live in a, in a way together without this terrorist group that runs everything. Yes. And I don't know what that looks like. It's not pretty, but it's better than this. <laughs> that is true. It's La- got to be better than this. Ladies and gentlemen, we could go round and round for hours and hours about these things because there is literally no end yes. in sight, at least. We could do as it. As of right now. We could do it while to listening all of to these deja things. vu around a fire. But again, the bigger, but my original <laughs> point, right, is that it's not about what's there. This is affecting us here. I'm not Israeli. Right. I understand that. Right, right. There's calls for violence and actual violence going on at Jews here in America now because of people claiming it's about Israel. Right. I can't affect Israel. I don't vote there. I don't live there. I live here. Right. I've been there. I visited. Right. But right. I'm not Israeli. And there's now there's now actual people saying anti-Semitic stuff to me here in the States. And my friend, I have a buddy who was the, the center for the YU basketball team. He got spit on in the New York subway many That's times. Fun, right. He wears the Yamaka. He's bigger than like me. That. What's happening if he's getting that? What's happening to a, a small Jewish girl? I don't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break here on The queue. When we come back, more with myself and these two gentlemen. We'll be back on the show after this. Twelve eighty AM at KYRO. Welcome back to The queue now. News Radio, KYRO.com. That's where you can find us every single Saturday, 1 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, rocking your radio. And uh, today our guest is Moshe. He's been hanging out with us. And uh, he's, been, he's, been, he's been very, 
He's been agitated. Let's just say he's been agitated, ladies and gentlemen. He's fiery. He's been, he's been fired, fired up. Fired he's been up. Fired I'm not up. agitated. I'm perfectly happy he's been right now. Fired up. <laughs> Good. He's been wanting to beat some college kids' butts. That's nah, what he's been wanting to, to right. smack them around. I'm, I'm too old for this. He's too old for it. I'm too old for this. It's too mis- old. Misguided violence. Well, you know, uh, when you come on the queue now, uh, we have this little thing we like to call the hot seat, sir. Welcome to the Q Now Hot Seat. You were not told about this. You don't know anything about it, but it's okay. It's very simple. We're going to ask you five questions. You don't know what these questions are. They are completely random. There is no right or wrong answer to these questions. Your answer and what you give is the answer. That's all there is to it. You will not be judged on these. There is no right or wrong answer. Sometimes we like to send it around the table and talk about it a little bit together. So it just depends on what the question is and stuff like that. But, uh... Are you ready to take on the hot seat, sir? Like a... I don't have a choice. Let's go. Like a defensive <laughs> like a defensive lineman getting ready to take you on one-on-one at Dartmouth. Oh, boy. Face-to-face. All right, Those here we go. better than I was. They Question really number one. What is something you regret not doing as a teenager? Is there something that pops into your head? You, Jay, anything that you regret not you doing know, as a teenager? There are two people I dated at middle and end of high school and the first half of college, and I regret those relationships because I could have had so much more fun. And I think that's why uh, in my early 20s to maybe almost to the mid to mid part of my 20s, 27 or so, yeah, I was a little crazy. A little it was, while. It was because I never had a chance to do anything fun. You also didn't have someone to wrangle you down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, I still had someone to wrangle me down. Like, like, like reel you in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You're like a fish right now. You want to go everywhere. You know, we got to get you back. <laughs> it's to some water. Get you back to the boat. I look a little ridiculous. Well, you know, as a, as a teenager, I was super uptight and high strung. I wish I had relaxed more. I would have enjoyed it so much more. Yeah, I was, right? Like, I, That's I've fair. actually apologized to my friends, some of whom I still have from then. I'm like, I don't know how you put up with me. Thank you for still being my friend. Yeah, sorry Seriously, about that. I would have punched myself. Teenage me was a pain just to talk to. Absolutely way too high strung, too uptight. You wish I would have chilled out that. What you just said, you remind me of my friend Adam. Uh, he actually is an elected official on the Republican side out here in the St. Charles area. But uh, you look like and you remind me, he's Jewish also, but you look like, because you're a bigger guy like he is, but so that he's a, story. He's a really good looking man. Fantastic looking <laughs> Super man. Super hot. The kind yeah. of guy that I'd Super say hot. clothing are optional is what I'm clothing saying. Optional, for clothing sure. optional for, for sure. sure. Um, that's a great answer though. That's a great answer. Uh, you can, uh, question number two. Mm-hmm. You can make any rated R movie a Lego movie. Which one would you pick? Any regular oh, rated R movie. Alien. That, you would do that as a Lego sure. movie? That's I want to see Lego Alien. You really do? I, it, it might be a disaster, but I want to see it. I think it could be really fun. I thought the Lego movie itself would be a disaster, and it was super it was fun. So good, right? So I don't know if it'll be fun or a mess, but I'm super curious. If to it's see the that. same writing team, it'll be fun. Right, that's I'm what I'm saying. I want, Alien, I want Alien. I want Alien. I mean, it might come out like like Spaceballs, right? Sure. <laughs> right. I kind of want. But Mel it's a Brooks, Lego thing. Right? I want to so see Mel Brooks make like Lego Alien. Man, that's a good okay. One. All right, Jay. Uh, any, anything off the top yes. of your head? Die Hard. You want to see Die Hard. yippee yes. ki yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I want to see? Die Hard. And just think about it. You could get physical Legos. Imagine a, making a Nakatomi Plaza. That's true. They have right? like the Marvel Castle yeah. or the yeah. Marvel building. And like or the whatever. heavily armored vehicles they sent in. Yeah, could be Legos. Could There's a yeah. lot of stuff. That- and it could be a playset. You could have a. Right. A, the limo. Yeah. The yeah. Limo. That ridiculous age Comes limo. with the exactly. little dude. Exactly. Oh, my God. The things that we do. I would do, uh, uh, I would do Tombstone. That's a good I one. I think it would be interesting to see Tombstone done as a Lego a movie. Lego movie? And it's kind of a play. In a Lego from style. The Lego I'll be, movie. I'll and be a Western. Huckleberry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Go. Like, things like that. Val they could Kilmer's play. greatest role. That's a suck. Okay, By far. Possibly. Possibly. You know what? Yeah. Is there anything? think gets a hard time for everything? I thought he was really Iceman. great in The Doors. Iceman, like, like, right, but the, gets, like that's gets, it. Like, like, if you think like, about when it. When he puts up good work, like, that was. Yeah. But what pops to your head the first time you think about Val Kilmer, it's either what we just said or Iceman. Like, there's not. I think really, in that one movie. There's other, there's other roles he's had, and we've all seen him, and we know he's good in them. <laughs> but it's like, what pops to my head right off the top is either. I think a top secret. <laughs> 
Isn't that that Top movie? seat with the popcorn. Movie? He's where he's the laser. He's one of few Razzies. He gets a real hard time. I'm like, look, he's done some great and, stuff and, too. And 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 uh, uh, Batman Forever. That was a really good one. All right. <laughs> Question number three on this hot That's seat. That's fair. <laughs> Question number three on this hot seat. You can swap lives with anyone for a day. Who are you choosing? Now you're going to live oh, their yeah. life. You're going to live their life. So if you switch with a Donald Trump. You're going to deal with the court right now, and you're going to be sitting in court all day, and you're going to be dealing with his life. It's whoever's life it is you want to switch with. You get it for the day. Whose life would you switch with? Do I get to have full choice, or am I just... Oh, you're in control the of the life. Like, for that day, like, you got the money, the power, the time, the every, like you. I have some really dark responses to this. Go for it. Like we I'd, don't mind. Like, I'd pick Putin so I could shoot myself. <laughs> okay. That's a that's that like an option? Now, would you want to not come back? It's only for a day. Like, you'll get to come back to your old life. Like, would, if you kill I, I mean, yourself. I'd, I'd rather come back. But, like, if you said, like, I could trade for him, like, there's a chance. My, I have many friends in Ukraine. Would I, you I, be willing? That's I almost would, like. I would, if I could stop this huh. war, I'd take one for the team. So, no so basically, if a group like Hamas came to you and said, will you do this for us? You'd be like. I can do that for you. Like, I'm willing to take one for everybody's team. Wow. Like, I'll go and do this. I will switch to Putin for uh, the day Putin likes and off myself. They, they, they support each other. Fine, regardless. I'm just saying, like, you'll do it. Yeah. yeah. I don't but, know. Well, you know and, and the other, the, the more cynical and fun one is, you know, uh, who's the richest guy? Buffett, maybe. Take him for the day. I got his bank account now. We're going to yeah, wire that ya. money. Yeah. One oh, motion yeah. I went out, oh, baby. I went out and to we're a park have a and really buried fun some money. Next day. That's, the, that's the nicer one. That's the less dark version. You could become the coach of whatever <laughs> football team. Maybe you go coach uh, pro Super Bowl for the day, or you go coach the college championship so, for the yeah, day, or whatever. Like the, like, the, the one guy I could improve on you know, is like a coach who like, doesn't do time management, and I don't want to help the Cowboys out. So. <laughs> oh, it's a good joke. You know, I, I would, not a uh, bad joke, actually. It's I would good. Take, over, uh, take over Elon and divest in all of his businesses. Why don't you do like he did with Putin and just off yourself? Well, I didn't know no, it was an so, option, I'm so joking, I was thinking. I'm I'm thinking. thinking. See, you just weren't creative enough. You but, just have to get darker. Uh, but... And then take all of my money and put it all into the Donald Trump entertainment and stock. Oh, God, no. Oh, <laughs> and then we Jesus. could just be done with him. He'd be done and he'd be over and we'd never have to worry about anything. All right. Question number four, Mr. Moshe. What is your guilty pleasure snack of choice? Ted Drews. Ted Drews. See the hesitation? None. Ted there Drews. was zero hesitation. <laughs> Ted Drews is the greatest. I almost feel to like man. if there was the, you know, like they always good. at the different, uh, the different uh, shops, like a Ted Drews, they have the yeah. machine that's constantly pushing the yes. ice cream slowly yeah, out of it, they and then they cut, cut it off a hunk. I feel like that machine is just one continuous loop. How fast he said that <laughs> from his mouth to that machine. If I could lie under like it like Polly just... Shore in Encino Man and wheeze uh, it, I would just lie there and just. And, and vibe it straight from the source, okay? Now, it's the greatest thing in the is world. Is it just is the taste juice of or it. is it frozen yogurt? You do you not mind other places, I, I, Oh, too. no, I, I like ice cream frozen I like the whole category, but Ted Drew's is specifically just the greatest of the entire thing, that it is itself better than, like, it's like the best of the bunch. And I love right. ice cream. I like other frozen yogurt. But Ted Drew's is, is just a step above the rest. No questions asked. All right. And it's clearly totally unhealthy for you. So uh, I'm 100% <laughs> choosing Ted Drew's here. You got one, uh, Jason? Uh, I mean, it's not really a, a – I mean, I don't know if I have a guilty pleasure because that has to be that you're kind of like ashamed of someone new. Like you might feel – like yeah, I can't say I'm like, ashamed of Ted Drew. Yeah, yeah. I'm so like, shameless. Like I'm movies, not you know, about it. movies, everyone has willing, like a movie. If it's a guilty pleasure. Well, like, I understand the idea of the guilty pleasure. I think when they say guilty pleasure in this case, they're just saying snacks that fall into this category when I usually go there, the sec- shouldn't be Not so much the guilty pleasure. When you go there pleasure. the third day in a row, you know you're not supposed yeah. to be right. there. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Hoodie's peanut butter mix. I can just see you pulling up. You're like, I'm in, boy. Yes. <laughs> That, uh, right. that, yeah, that case of Hoodie's peanut butter mix you can get at Costco. Question number stuff. five, and the final question of the hot seat. Sir, you've survived up to this point. You're doing well. What did the pandemic ruin more than we realize? Think about the pandemic, all the things that came and went with it. What did the pandemic ruin more than we realize? I have an answer for this. I do have an answer for this. Um, I'm going to say personally, since nobody else had anything, I'm going to say personally, uh, 
24 hour stores. Yeah. Like it ruined 24 hour Walmarts and 24 hour medical places. Like there's hardly any 24 hour places left at all. And it was kind of nice that there was a bunch of restaurants and fast food places open really yeah. late and all this stuff. I'm not against where we're at in the world today. We're way better off than we were in 2020, 2021. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm happier, like, with the way that the world runs and works today as opposed to then. But, I, yeah, like, 24-hour places. I also feel like we also kept things that we didn't need to. You've been to a quick trip? Mm-hmm. You know how they set up their, like, aisles now? Yeah, the way that we would all stand, stand. But yeah. the way we would all stand about three to five feet apart from each yeah, other. The, now well, we just still do feet. that anyway, even though there's no requirements to do mm-hmm. it at all. So people being there's nice. things that came out of it that we also kept. I think mine was my belief that not everyone was an idiot. Anything from the pandemic that <laughs> has uh, crossed your mind, Moshe? The, it's okay if you don't have an answer. That's fine. Uh Everyone is aware of it, but I still think that everyone's collective sanity. Like we, we just coming, yes. out, coming out of it. We, you know, everyone has gone on all sides of the aisle, absolutely mad, and it stuck with us somewhat. And there's some some trauma from it, and it's absolutely awful. There's more fighting, there's more partisanship. <laughs> I literally on said the daily basis. to my brother the other day as I was coming to his place to meet up with him. There's more road rage and people raging in their cars at other people. Sure. That I've noticed and seen mm-hmm. in the last year than prior 20 years before that, for sure. Every bit of 20 years before that. There's like, still huge numbers of people railing for either masks or anti vaccine uh, beliefs. That now, is so weird. Like, there's still people raging about this. I'm like, whatever your beliefs were on this, the, the pandemic. Well, yes, there is still some COVID with this. People still get it. It's still it's a thing. It's never going away. Like I lost a friend to it in his forties. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's but, not going away. But uh, but we aren't in the worst of it right now. Like this is you can go about your life normally, and there's still a lot of people who are really nuts about it. And it's not a small number. It's affecting our politics still. Mm-hmm. We have collectively lost our sanity in this thing, I, and I'm worried it's not coming back. I was shocked in the amount of people who wouldn't just follow rules. Like a store said, wear a mask. And they just would. People who have a shirt on. Sure. Like, if you refuse to put your shirt on in a store, people would think you were insane. Yeah. But they would think you are insane. People are like, oh, yeah, I see that. I see that. Yeah. Like, I agree with him. But if you didn't want to wear pants or shoes, people would be like, what are you doing? Put your shoes on. But not a mask. It's Moshe, weird. we're at the end of the show. And I want to thank you first off for being on the show with us today and talking to us and hanging out with us. I think that it's been really fun. We got to learn a lot about you and you're a good dude. Um, I also think that people might want to get in contact with you if they can find you anywhere. Is there anywhere that they can find you or talk to you? Um, I'm actually pretty active on Twitter where I regularly support uh, the Ukrainian cause. Um, Still have a lot of friends over there. They're still unfortunately dying to Russian aggression. Uh, you, I will respond to your show when it posts there, so that's the easiest place to find me. Uh, sure. I've interacted with you there today. If someone just randomly wants to find me in public, that's probably the most active social media I've got. My DMs are always open there. That is the easiest way to reach me on something that I for sure will respond to. On Twitter? Yeah. And what is the name? Uh, it's at Perception Money, and it is a funny-looking NAFO dog as the picture. Okay. Perception Money. Yep. Got it. At Perception Money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, With that, it brings us to what I like to call collectively the end of our show. At least I thought it was the end of our show. Maybe it's not the end of our show. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm crazy. It sounds like it is the end of our show. Thank you so much, Moshe, for once again being on our show. We really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Anytime. Jason, thank you so much for once again being on the show, dude. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, to all of you out there, thank you for listening every single week. We appreciate you sharing. Make sure you check us out at Apple Podcasts. Go find us. You can go to thequeuenow.com. Click it. We've got our iTunes feed and everything like that right there. You can uh, rate and review and talk uh, talk to your friends about us. Let everybody know that this show is out here fighting for and protecting all of you politically in this world. We are the voice of politics and pop culture. We are the Q now, and we will see you guys next time on the show. Yeah.